Hi again. Uh, welcome to part two. The basics about uh, knurling. Let's uh, you know proceed to maybe narrow down the guesswork because sometimes you know guessing and uh, trying and uh, whatever. Mostly with knurling can be pretty frustrating and the results can be very deceiving. So there's a little bit of calculation involved uh, that will give you a starting point and sometimes maybe few adjustments might be needed but at least you're getting close to uh, you know getting close to uh, to be on track so with no further uh, introduction let's go to um, start knurling as uh, one thing we have to uh, get to know a little bit about that is uh, turning speeds if you go much above like a hundred surface feet per minute uh, you uh, you're on the risk of a uh, running in, into problems. Uh, one of those problems is the uh, wheels turning fast on their uh, on their pins because uh, if you uh, get these uh, these wheels here and the pins here uh, these pins I mean they uh, you know when the wheels are turning they're exerting lots of force to keep the pin uh, the uh, the rollers in place and uh, they might just uh, freeze out of a uh, heat and uh, just uh, <laughs> run you into big trouble. Um, two things on this, keep them lubricated, lots of, uh, you know, have, they have to have room to get the lubricant uh, going through them and also keep the speed a little lower. And uh, the harder the material, uh, the more attention be paid to, sp to speed because you're going to bring the, uh, you know, those two jaws going to bring together like much, much more pressure and the more pressure you have, it will heat up a little bit. You'll feel some warmth on that uh, after you know you've been knurling a few inches. So uh, it just shows like uh, the, work, the, the hard work it's doing. To uh, achieve higher speeds and higher pressure is to use instead of uh, hardened dowel pins or whatever, you can use uh, carbide, solid carbide pits. You can increase the speed a little bit and the forces involved. So in some cases, it might solve your problems. Uh, there's also the uh, factor of advance um, you know you will advance like uh, from about five thousandths uh, per revolution to about 25 30 thousandths per revolution uh, coarser uh, neurals like uh, coarser patterns will require a little bit uh, lesser advance because they have to dig deeper and the uh, you know they have to uh, make the imprint uh, it's a little bit more work and the smaller uh, patterns will benefit from uh, some higher speed so they don't you know like turn back into the same groove like uh, as many times uh, a knurl should be done with from maybe uh, 10 to 20 revolutions the wheels turning on the same spot that uh, would allow uh, you know a decent knurl to be achieved um, some materials will work hard in uh, copper uh, brass, a uh, certain type of uh, stainless steel. So you might just want to give a little bit faster advance on these materials so you don't rework the material as often by reducing the number of times the uh, wheels will uh, go back uh, and you know pass over the same, uh, the same area. Uh, now let's go with uh, the uh, different type of wheels. Okay, as uh, probably most people know, there are you know dozens and dozens of types of uh, knurling wheels, and uh, some specialized, some you know very uh, exotic ones. But uh, we're going to talk about the uh, most current ones, the ones that uh, we're a little bit more uh, prone to have in our toolboxes. Uh, the first type here is the squared edge uh, wheels. These uh, wheels are uh, you know square edges on the uh, on the top there. They're meant to uh, apply pressure and they're not meant to go uh, into the uh, actual uh, knurling. So uh, this is good for uh, one localized uh, knurl and uh, that's about it. The width of the wheel, the maximum. Second type is uh, what we use in our example. They're beveled edge uh, wheels. These ones are okay for actual uh, travel and uh, they will produce a pretty good, uh, pretty good result. And uh, the last one, a little bit less uh, usual, it's the uh, convex 
you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the top of the neural is convex. This is specially recommended for axial uh, knurling when you're talking about forming wheels because these wheels are not cutting wheels because some wheels will cut but these ones will displace the metal and make low amounts with them and uh, it's called forming. Uh, let's now enlarge one section of a knurling wheel that will give us a little bit more details. Uh, in this example we're using a 25 teats per inch wheel uh, we want to find the pitch of that uh, wheel. It's 1 divided by the number of teats per inch. That will give us, in our uh, case, 40 thousandths of an inch between each patterns. Uh, this means that when the wheel and the uh, part to be knurled are turning, they will imprint onto the circumference of the knurled part a 40,000 space pattern to be kept uh, in mind when we're doing the further calculations. Notice also the bottom of the uh, pattern on the wheel is manufactured to a 90 degree angle. Uh, for finer patterns there might be different angles but not in the scope of this uh, presentation. When performing neurals using a uh, form type uh, knurling wheel, uh, the goal you're going to try to achieve as far as penetration is concerned is 90 percent. Uh, how do we measure that? We got the pitch here which is 40 thousandths. You want to measure the height of the 90 percent penetration there. So if you put the height there it will divide by 2 which is 20 thousandths there, 20 thousandths there and since these two angles there are 45 degrees and this is a right angle you will get a height of 20 thousandths there. The calculation is easy 90 percent of 20 thousandths will give you 18 thousandths and that's how much you gotta penetrate into the uh, metal you want to knurl to get you know some pretty decent knurl. This will avoid you from over knurling which will pack the end there and you know, uh, displace more metal than you need to displace. Uh, in the present example, uh, we're using uh, three quarters of an inch or a 750 thousandths uh, rod to start with. You know, like the rod is three quarters, three quarters of an inch before knurling. We have to prepare uh, different steps in there or, you know, a different diameter to achieve the uh, right pattern on this. So uh, I'll show you how we get there. Uh, the circumference of a uh, circle is the diameter multiplied by pi. Pi is 3.1416. Uh, never ends but we'll take those four numbers. I'll be uh, close enough. So the circumference of the uh, part we're using is 750 thousandths of an inch multiplied by pi. Uh, the whole circumference around will give you like 2 inches and 356 thousandths. Uh, we found the pitch distance on the wheel that we're actually using, which is a 25 uh, treads or uh, teat per inch. Uh, the pitch distance is actually 40 thousandths of an inch. Okay, we want to know now how many times the uh, teats per inch or the treads per inch will fit in the circumference and we don't want the fraction at the end. We'll find it with the fraction and then we'll take it out. The circumference is the divided by the pitch distance. Uh, the circumference is 2 inches 356 thousandths divided by 40 thousandths of an inch uh, the number of times that uh, the wheel, w the, 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 the pattern will be uh, in the wheels is 58 times 0.9. So we will keep the integral number which is 58 times. Next step, uh, we want to know the new diameter uh, that will accommodate uh, 58 times the number of the pitch to fit 
in our uh, 750 thousandths diameter original part. Uh, 750 is the most we have, so we can't add. So we have to go under that, so we'll take the uh, extra uh, fraction of it, and we'll take it out, and we'll get the uh, integer, the uh, lower integer, which is 58. Uh, and we'll multiply that by 40 thousandths. It will give you a new circumference of 2 inches, 320 thousandths. Uh, from there, we will find the final diameter that uh, we'll, we need to uh, achieve uh, the neural. Uh, the circumference divided by pi and this is two, two, two inches, 320,000 divided by pi. The new final diameter will be 738,000. And this 738,000 will be the diameter we use right there just before we start knurling. This is 750. We can't add anything. But, and we have to get something with an even, uh, an even number uh, without, uh, you know, you know uh, without the fraction. So the biggest next diameter under 750 will be 738. This is where we start and we get the uh, the neurals. We also shown uh, this part here which uh, I'm not going to uh, go very uh, detail with this but we made this part like uh, 735 and a half, I think, is something like that. We tried to make the pattern on this instead of giving a nice, clean pattern like that. I mean, it just screws up the pattern. Like it's not a lot; it's two thousandths of an inch, two thousandths of an inch, but enough to screw up the uh, the thing. So, get closer to your uh, nominal uh, diameter, and you will achieve nicer, uh, nicer stuff. Hey, this is a lot of calculation. Uh, if you want to save yourself the trouble of calculating every time the parameters to, uh, you know, achieve neurals, there's a guy in uh, Denmark, sorry, uh, he's called Kelt Sorensen. He's got a website that uh, he puts up a little application he readily accepted to freely share his application with uh, people that just go there, just uh, download it. So I'll give the information to his uh, website uh, just in the description or the subtitles. Also, he's got a YouTube channel. He does some machining. And to what I heard, he's also on the verge of treating dementia. Uh, you probably uh, hear about his secret ingredient somewhere in there. Uh, go see Kel. I think he'll be happy to see you and uh, say thank you about the application. I think he'll appreciate that too. As a final word to this uh, mini-series about knurling, if you want to produce quality knurls, get good tools, get good wheels, get good everything. Uh, also, if you are interested in to knowing where the wheels come from, uh, they come from a company called AccuTrack. Uh, we even had the chance of visiting how the wheels were made and the tools were made. If you want to see that, just uh, get on the channel. There is a video about that. And also, if you need uh, to like uh, solve some knurling problems or you need some knurling solutions, go talk to those people, and I'm sure they'll uh, be more than happy to help you with uh, you know your knurling production or uh, whatever regards knurling. Also, would like to thank you for uh, sitting by. I guess the if you're courageous enough to watch this till the end. And if you like, just say so. If you want to comment or just subscribe, I mean, that'd be a great encouragement for me. So thank you very much for being there and uh, see you in uh, some other, uh, other subjects in the future.